Namaste. I'm here to tell you about something very important over the next, well, three months or so, but beginning now, the astrological configuration is such, and the physical situation is such that the sun is about to switch its magnetic field. This happens every 11 and a half years as a normal part of the sunspot cycle. But at this point, the Earth's magnetic field is also very weak. And this is a typical uh, sign that the Earth's magnetic field can flip as well. But even if it doesn't, we're going to be under a lot of influence from the sun because the Earth's magnetic field is so weak, it's not going to screen them out. So what does that mean? You know, on the street, <laughs> boots on the ground, down to earth, practical. It means this is the time to create the future that you want. This is the time when causality, which remember, as we discussed in another video, reaches from the future to the past, can be created that will influence the present. But let me show you how that works. I feel thirsty. Ah, just the thing. By the way, a lemon or lime water boiled is highly recommended actually every place, any place, if you can get it. Or uh, lemon juice if you don't have access to fresh lemons. But what just happened? I said, I'm feeling thirsty. I want a glass of water. So I created this condition in the future where I will have a glass of water. Isn't it? And then I turned my body over here. I looked and found the glass of water and grabbed it and brought it to my lips and drank. So I created a future where all those things would come together so that we could have this event. Uh, I'm thirsty, I want to slake my thirst. So in the same way, a time when the magnetic lines of attraction are weak is a time to establish a new center of attraction, a new strange attractor, in the future, an end state toward which you want reality to incline. You don't want to cause anything now. <laughs> you just want to create a, a vision, a projection, an overlay, a fabrication, a superimposition. Uh, in the future. It's the old Jedi mind trick, you know? But this is how. This is how you do it. You create a future where the condition that you desire is satisfied. And then you just wait for it. <laughs> it's magic. It really is. This, this really is what magic is. Okay? So what will happen is that you will be drawn, like magnetically or even gravitationally, towards this end point, this uh, end state or condition that you have called into existence by your desire, your fabrication, your overlay, your superimposition. Huh? This is the way meditation works, too. Meditation calls into being Brahman, and then overlays another thing, a worshipable deity, a name, on top of that, which is something that is within reach. Huh? 
Brahman, of course, cannot be grasped, <laughs> cannot be understood, cannot be really talked about at all. It is that which is not anything. So uh, Brahman, you, you can't talk about it, but you can create a symbol that fixes the mind upon it indirectly. And this is what Vedic meditation does. For a simple example, Aum Namah Shivaya. Now, Aum is transcendental. Aum is Turiya. Aum is, is beyond everything. Okay, but then Aum is overlaid, superimposed with Namah Shivaya. Namah Shivaya. Aum Namah Shivaya. Aum Namah Shivaya. The Aum is still ringing in your ears when you pronounce Namah Shivaya. And Shiva is within reach. Shiva is as far away as your nearest Shivalingam. And since I happen to have one, you know, just in the other room, <laughs> Shiva is something very tangible to me. You know, every day I perform various services for my Shiva Lingam. And this shows up in my consciousness as a, like a gateway through the tangible to the intangible, through the manifest to the unmanifest. It's stated in Shiva Purana that the form of Shiva, the statue type deity of Shiva, is uh, or symbolizes the uh, manifested form of Shiva, but the Shiva Lingam symbolizes the unmanifested form, the uh, beyond Hiranyagarbha, beyond even Shakti, pure Brahman, Nirguna Brahman, nothingness, emptiness, the source, the all. So this Aum is not really understandable per se. Okay, so in order to concentrate the mind on it, you know, the mind is very slippery anyway. <laughs> you try to concentrate on something uh, imperceptible and formless and what, and it's so abstract, you know, the mind is just going to go, ah, forget it, you know, let's go smoke a joint or something. <laughs> but if you give it something it can hang on to, like Shiva, even in just the form of his name, especially when we have so many experiences, so many vasanas or memories, habit patterns of serving Shiva in the form of the deity and in the form of the mantra and so forth. Then, you know, Shiva becomes something relatively concrete to the mind, even though it's, it's still only a metaphor. Huh? But it's a metaphor for something much less concrete, much more abstract, much more difficult to grasp, which is Brahman, Aum, Namah Shivaya. <laughs> Aum sets the stage, Aum creates the substrate, and Namah, defines the relationship, Shiva defines the object. So the subject, the object, and the act of apprehension or awareness or being is consummated in the triple, Aung Nama Shivaya. Aung, the substrate, Nama I offer my obeisances, Shivaya, unto Shiva, the Lord of all. Huh? Brahman wearing the Ishatvam Upadi. <laughs> and we are Brahman wearing the Jivatvam Upadi. That's the only difference. So when we invoke this name, when we invoke this mantra, we invoke a state of mind, this superimposition. Now, the superimposition can be anything. According to Vedanta Sutra, come on, we've been over this in previous videos. 
according to Vedanta Sutra and the Chandogya Upanishad. All forms of meditation are the same. They're equal, and they give the same result, which is union with Brahman. Why? Because Brahman is the substrate. Brahman, or consciousness, and the substrate of consciousness, which is awareness, is always present within the thought of the mantra or the uh, deity or whatever format or whatever metaphor is being used. It doesn't matter. The same principle is at work. Yes, there is superimposition. But since the superimposition is on the ground of Brahman, it is not harmful. It doesn't actually distract us. In fact, it is the ultimate object that we're concentrating on through the symbol or the metaphor of the mantra or the deity or the worship. So this is why Shankaracharya promoted, actively encouraged, and even established temples for the worship of the traditional Vedic deities in India. This is why he composed many beautiful prayers. I mean, you know, just matchless, unimaginably good prayers <laughs> to the various deities and encouraged people to worship them. Because according to the Vedas, according to the Upanishads, according to Vedanta, all these different forms of meditation lead to the same place. What is that? God, the Absolute, the Tao, Nibbana, Nirvana, <laughs> Samadhi, Yoga. Call it whatever you will. It's a certain state of being. And, and when we see the monastic orders in every spiritual tradition, in every culture, follow pretty much the same guidelines. Celibacy, aloneness, silence, contemplation, simplicity, you know, faith, right, dedication, devotion, all these values expressed in whatever format or whatever metaphor they're schooled in. You know, that's the relative part. But the absolute part is that contemplation of the nature of the self, the nature of consciousness, the nature of being. This is common to all traditions. This is the esoteric teaching. Because, you know, strictly speaking, it can't be spoken about. It can be experienced. Now, if you come and learn with a master, that's the first thing you're going to experience is his practice which is going to be deep. It's going to be scary. It's so deep. And it's probably going to be very uh, individualistic, very much unique to that master, and probably way out, eccentric. So every master has got this side to them, which cannot be explained. It can only be experienced by emulation, by becoming a disciple, by becoming an apprentice to someone who knows. That's why that is the path. Always has been, always will be, because that's just the way it works. Om Tat Sat. Om Shakti Om. Om Namah Shivaya.